Rome is interesting because it can be incredibly easy and simple to get started, yet there's some power users out there that are doing complex coding that really shows off the low floor, high ceiling quality of this note taking tool. Right now, I wanna focus on the five fundamentals. These features aren't necessarily unique to Rome, but how they compound with one another in unique and novel ways is why there's such a fuss over all this. I'm not gonna to get too in depth, but just know that with the understanding of these five fundamentals, you can literally build out a massively complex Zettelkasten hidden behind beautiful simplicity. Let's start with fundamental number one, the daily notes page. This page will automatically update at midnight depending on the location you have set on your computer. Sometimes while burning the midnight oil, you'll even notice that as you are typing a new page is created above you. If you scroll down or hover over view more, it is an infinite scroll through all the days. And if at any time you wanna to jump to the daily notes page, Hover over the left sidebar and clicking on the daily notes button will take you back to today. One reason that having the daily notes as a fundamental element of your writing in Rome is that it can easily show you the progress and context of when and why something was written. Imagine opening up a permanent note and wondering how you came up with such a novel idea. <laughs> and if you click on the date, it can provide a bit more context of what may have been going on that day. Maybe you got a raise. Maybe your dog died. Because we're using a shared graph, we will mimic that behavior, but in our own pages. But more on that later. Next is fundamental number two, nesting. Traditionally called indenting, in Rome, this fundamental element affects everything from how information is recalled to how information is connected. There's a couple of terms I wanna go over to help make things a bit clearer. At the very top, you have parent blocks with children blocks underneath. Makes sense. Under children blocks, you can add more children blocks. And now the children have become parents. The circle of life. The parents are now top level parent blocks. And we can also add sibling blocks. And by the way, you see the colors. So I'm going to keep this Rome shared graph without a theme and pretty much vanilla, but I do want to make things easier. So I've added these little sprinkles of CSS code, including a highlight to show where your mouse is hovering. And if you click into a block to edit it, the coloring of the bullet point will show you the relationship all the way down the thread. And this can show you a little clearer how siblings are related. Now, I'm going to move on, but just know that how things are nested in Rome will show up differently when you're looking to resurface what you've written later. Okay, fundamental number three, pages or brackets or double open brackets, depending on your nerdiness. These suckers are the workhorse of Rome. They connect, they can query, they can be filtered, and they can be nested inside each other. Now, it may seem a bit daunting, but just think of them as the simplest way to connect two things together. If you look on your keyboard, next to the letter P, you can use your pinky to hit the C-shaped open bracket. See how it auto-completes with the... What shape is that? Well, well, well it auto-completes with the closed bracket. Anyways, hit the open bracket twice, and now you've got it. That little pop-up can also fuzzy search for pages you've already created. So again, a powerful workhorse. You can make a page in the middle of typing. You can make a page by highlighting and then hitting the open bracket twice. You can even make a page by typing into the search bar and creating a new page. I can easily spend a whole week going through the complex ways in which we can really build out a knowledge database with just the pages themselves, but we don't have that much time and we still have two more fundamentals. Anyways, the fourth fundamental. Drum roll, please. The hashtag. Boo. Okay. So you might think that this wouldn't really qualify to be a fundamental, but let's just put it like this. What a hashtag does is link to pages, just like the brackets do, but they also change the color. I'm kidding. They provide a different context in which we relate to a page. For instance, if I tell you to organize something in the digital realm, what's the first thing you do? It sure as hell ain't the pound sign. Now, the hashtag is a pretty new invention, if you think about it. Google tells me 2007, but the important thing to remember is that it changes the way of how we look at the page. And if what we look at changes, how we interact with that changes too. I don't wanna get metaphysical, but just understand that the beautiful simplicity of the hashtag will serve us very well as we start striding within Rome. Number five, 
The fifth and final fundamental is the block. I'm gonna break this down into two parts, but understand that this is the most powerful thing about Rome, hands down. First, you have the block itself, which is each one of those little bullet points. When you look at every other note-taking app, you traditionally have something like this. A folder, within a folder, within a folder, with a file, with notes in it. In Rome, you get rid of all those, and now the block is where the granularity happens. That probably makes no sense to you, but let me. Okay, how about this? Remember that folder structure? Let's, re let's recreate that in Rome. A folder, within a folder, within a folder, with a file, with notes in it. Yeah, that one got you, huh? Hashtag Rome cult, fundamental number four. Now, the second part of this is where things get a bit complex. But remember, let's just focus on the fundamental aspect of all this. So just because you have things nested doesn't mean that it's what Rome can do. It's the transclusion. Tra 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 hmm. It's the inclusion of part or all of something into one or more other documents. Going back to the folder example. You'll notice that each one of those bullet points actually has a specific reference. And when I pull them down, the original block now has been linked or referenced. If I actually click into the block, you'll notice the unique identifier for each block reference. And if I play with things a bit, I can even write whole sentences with just block references. Now, if you weren't sitting down before this started, I'm glad you are now. Although there's so much more to uncover as you learn how to use Rome, with these five fundamentals, you can actually build a lightweight, powerfully simple digital Zettelkasten. If you haven't already, I'll leave the link to the Rome Book Club sign-up sheet in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow for our first day.